This is the final part four of the Blooming Flowers series. In this video, we'll use our existing flower setup to build the flower currently on screen. We'll analyze reference images, shape the flower using the tools in the setup, talk about vellum constraints, cache out the simulation and load it into Solaris, where we'll set up our camera, lights, and procedural Karma shaders to finally render in Karma XPU. Let's start out by looking at the petal shape. I've marked all the nodes that we're going to use in this process in a green color. So we'll press this shape petal. And here I've just brought up some pictures of the flower that I'm going to try to recreate. So we can see that these leaves are quite broad. So I'll just increase this width to 0.75. And they don't really have this shape here in the beginning. They have more of a wide shape all the way through. But we can see that they kind of get to their widest point near the top. So we can just adjust the scale ramp to fit exactly how we want it to. I think this looks pretty good. So now we have a little bit of pinching here at the top. So we'll go to our fuse node and I'll just increase the snap distance to 0.02. The pinching in the bottom doesn't really matter because we have that disabled in the vellum sim anyway. At this point, you could adjust this dome shape if you wanted to, but I think it actually works pretty well. So I won't adjust that at the moment. From now on, we'll be visualizing this get deformed petals in the vellum sim network box. And I'll just start out by adjusting this number of petals because as we can see on this flower reference here, we have much fewer petals. I found that a number of 21 fits this flower quite well. If you wanted to, you could count or you could look up what your specific flower generally has in terms of number of petals. We're now looking at the Philotaxis node. We'll keep this Philotaxis angle of 137.5, but the petals are way too far apart. So I'll just change this radius to 0.175. They're also way too far apart in the height, so I'll change this height to 0.2. And this height ramp, I'll just give it a little bit of an S-curve. So if we do like this and like this, then if you click one of these and you shift select and click another of the points, you can click this icon here. And if you go to beast line, you get a smooth interpolation throughout these points. This multiply growth by mapped U will also leave for later, but I'll just disable it for now so that we can better see what we're doing. Then we'll go on to adjust the orientation. We can see here, because this is the flower state that we're kind of aiming for when it's bloomed, these petals don't really go down below the bottom of the flower at this point. So that tells me that this out angle is probably too high. So I'll set that to 45 instead of 90. I'll also change this bloom angle ramp to be more of an S-curve. And then I'll change the frame range to be at the beginning of our animation so that we're looking at the bud pose. And generally this part is going a little bit back and forth between this orientation node here and these rig poses. Because when you adjust the rotation on the root, that's kind of the same as adjusting these rotations. But I found that it's necessary to have both these bud angle and bloom angle ramps as well as these rig poses for each one of them. So just know that when you're modeling your own flower, you'll need to go back and forth between these a little bit until you kind of get the balance that you need. We can see over here, for example, that we have a butt pose, but right now our butt pose looks nothing like this. It will a bit later on. I'll just set this butt angle ramp to 0.2 and then I'll show you the adjustments that I'm making over here in the butt pose and the bloom pose. We'll start out by looking at the butt pose. So for this butt pose, I'll just start out at the bottom here and look at the arms because we can see that these petals are kind of folding in on themselves while the these petals here aren't really doing that. So I'll just set this to minus one instead of minus 13.5. So that'll spread out the sides of the petal a lot more than they were before. Then I'll just go and look at the tip. In order to get this kind of effect of things being really tightly packed together, we need to fold these in towards each other a lot more at the tip. So I'll just set this to 11.5. Then we'll go to the spine and I'll set that to 8.25 and then go to the root. And sometimes it's beneficial to just look at a single petal. So that's where we have this bone deform over here, just looking at one petal. And I think we just need to reset these scales and have a look at it at its real size. So this X value here is kind of the depth of the petal, which I don't think we want to adjust in this case. So we'll leave that at one, but I think we do want to make it smaller in the height. So I'll set that to 0.3 and then I'll adjust this set value, which is the width to 0.3. And to me, that looks a lot more similar to the shape that we're getting here in our reference. And then if we go back to looking at 
the full pedal, we can see that they're rotating way too much in towards themselves. So I'll just slide this back to a value of minus 68. And then we have this transform down here where we just want to move these pedals closer together. So instead of scaling it in the Y, I'll just scale it uniformly 0.4. So now they're much more tightly packed. And when we run this through the Vellum Sim, we'll get something a lot more similar to this shape here. Now I'll go towards the end of the animation and adjust the bloom pose. So on this route, we want to do nothing. And now we're already pretty close to the result that we want. Yeah, I'll set this spine to minus 0.5. I'll set the tip to minus 20. And for the arms, if we look at this shape here, we can see that they kind of bulge in in the middle and then they bulge out at the edges. So we just want to rotate this the other way to something like 4.75. And now I'm pretty happy with this. But if we look at these two flowers here, it's pretty clear that the petals towards the edges have grown much more than the petals in the center have. So that's why I included this multiply growth by mapped U because it allows us to basically multiply the growth attribute after we've done the animation. So we keep whatever animation ramp we make in this growth animation. We still get to limit the values that some of these petals reach. So we can see when we adjust this, that if we set it up to one, this node does nothing. But if we turn it down, we can see that the innermost petals have grown less than the outermost petals. I'll just set this to a value of 0.45. Something that you can also adjust here are these bud size and bloom size, which in this case, I just chose to do nothing in the bud pose. And then in the bloom pose, the innermost petals are a bit smaller than the outermost petals. And we have this S curve again, going through the U attribute. Right now, our growth animation is a completely linear animation. So if you imagine that these on the growth animation node are keyframes, it's a linear interpolation between the two keys here. And while that's all fine, it's usually a lot more interesting if it has a little bit more of an S-curve to it. So I'll select both of them and I'll set them to Bessier curves. So now we get these blue handles here. And I really like it when the flower kind of starts slow, then grows pretty fast and then ends up slow as well. So it keeps growing for a long while after it's almost done. So I'll do a curve kind of like this. And here we can see that it kind of hesitates at first, but then it goes really fast. And then for a little while, it just slowly tapers off towards the end. Now we'll go on to look at this petal surface noise. This flower doesn't really have too much going on in terms of surface noise, but we just need to add a little bit to get some of these imperfections here at the edges. So for this, I'll just adjust this ramp a little bit so we can see that we get a much stronger noise at the tip of the petal. Then we can adjust these frequencies. If I just increase this amplitude so we can see what it's doing really, we generally want more frequency in the X direction. So we kind of get these lines going from the bottom towards the tip, but it doesn't really need to be in Insane. So I'll set this to a value of 3.3. I'll change the roughness to a clean value of 0.3 and the amplitude to 0.25. And I'll actually just duplicate this over one more time and put it down below itself. And this time I'll just go for a more uniform noise across the entire surface. So I'll set all of these frequencies to three and then I'll change the offset so it's not the same noise as before. And I'll set the amplitude to 0.1. Before we go into the vellum sim, we just need to check that this pose here at the beginning, which is our de-intersection pose, is actually de-intersected. And at this point, it really isn't. So this is a moment where we'll actually go into this animation sequencing. I'll just set this rotation value to minus 30, and now it should all be de-intersected again. I chose to go with this ramp for the stretch stiffness so that the tip of the pedal will be more affected by the vellum simulation. Then in vellum initialize cloth, I just lowered the bend stiffness to this value here. And at this point, I'm ready to start my simulation. As a quick aside, here's a comparison between some different constraint settings. I isolate a single pedal by blasting the rest to check how the cloth behaves. For this setup, I went with the settings on the right.
Now I'll cash out the sim. Now that our simulation is cached, we'll subdivide the geometry once, and then we'll add another layer of this pedal surface noise, just to give it a bit more high res detail. We can see, however, on this flower reference here, that it's not really as strong as I've made it. So I'll just lower the amplitude a little bit to 0.2. Maybe we want another layer of this. So for this layer, I'll just increase the frequency by quite a bit. And then I'll limit this to be more towards the edges because we can see that these edges are quite distorted where ours was a lot more perfect before. So we'll just try to limit this a bit more to the tip and I'll just decrease the amplitude to 0.15. Then as we set up before, we have it running through this poly soup and then we're outputting it to a file cache, which is called flower. I'll hit save to disk again. Now we're going to import our simulation into Solaris. So we'll just go to the stage network and we'll drop down a geometry sequence. Then we'll locate our cache and we can see that our cache is now loaded within Solaris. The first thing I'll do is just scale down the entire thing to 0.1 because at the moment each petal is one meter tall, which is quite a bit too much. So now we're down to 10 centimeters. Now I will hit this no cam button here and press new camera. So we create a camera from you. I'll just set that up somewhere around the center. I'll also just add a light and I'll make this a rectangle light. And if I hit the specular button up here, I can just press an area on a pedal and it'll aim the light in such a way that the specular highlights will be at this place that I hit with the mouse. Our light is one meter by one meter. So I'll just scale it down. And if we start a render now by clicking perspective and then Karma XPU. First of all, this is pretty dark. So we can increase our exposure to something like four. Second of all, we have this dark gray background, which doesn't really make sense because there's no other ambient light coming out in the scene. So if we hit the D key over the viewport, we can go to this background tab and where it says color scheme, we'll change that to dark. So now it's a completely black background. We also have this grid, which we don't really want. So we'll just hit this button up here and now that's turned off. If you want, you can also turn off this display light guides, display camera guides and display selection to get a more clean render in the viewport. And if I change this to the camera view icon, we have nothing else going on in the scene. Now we can just duplicate this light and I just wanna make sure to get light on other parts of this flower as well. So I'll just move it back a little bit here. So we'll append a material library, then we'll dive into the material library and we'll create a Karma material builder. This will be our petal material. So I'll rename this and we can just drag and drop this onto our flower. And we'll say that we want it on the mesh zero. We can also go here on the material X standard surface and we can change the color if we wanted to, just to confirm that it works. A quick little tip that I'll be using a lot while doing this process is that if you drop down a material X surface unlit, you put the out into the surface. You can see now that we get a flat color. Then we'll load in our UV2 attribute using a geometry property value. We'll set it to UV2 and we'll set it to a vector2. So if we set this out into the emission color, you can see that we can now visualize our UV coordinates without any lighting applied. Now, the reason we're looking at our UV2 is that we want a gradient that goes from the bottom of a pedal to the top of the pedal. So we'll use a material X separate vector2 and we want the Y coordinate. So if we put this into our emission color, we get this gradient. And now if I drop down a Karma ramp, I'll just put in the same colors as I used for the render. And now I'll plug this into my base color of the material X standard surface, and I'll take this out and put it into the surface. So now we have some color and we'll just take that same color and put it into the subsurface color. And I will just adjust my specular. I'll set the roughness up to something like 0.6 and I'll enable subsurface, but I'll only set it to 0.7. Then I'll set this radius to also be a somewhat warm color. I'll just do something like this. And then if I go down to geometry, I'll set it to be thin walled because our geometry doesn't actually have any thickness. So we don't want the shader to think that it does. And now we're already pretty close to the result that we're looking for. We actually just need to add a little bit of surface noise and then we're done. 
Our geometry is moving and noise is a position based thing, but you can also set it to be based on UVs. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take this geometry property value, which is our UVs, and we'll add a material X unified noise 2D. And then I'll input this UV into the texture coordinates. And I can now preview what this noise outputs. And then I'll adjust this frequency a bit because right now we can see that it's not really doing much. I'll set that to a value of six and I'll set the noise type to fractal and I'll increase the octaves to four so we get a bit more detail. Then I'll put this into a material X range and we can just take this and view the range instead. I'll just set the out low to be 0.5 and the out high to be 0.9. This will be our roughness values in the shader. So if we visualize the shader now and I open up the specular and I take this material X range and put it into the specular roughness, you might be able to see that there's a little bit of breakup happening. We also want to add sheen to our shader because right now our highlights are very white and usually on flowers they have a bit more of the petal color. So I'll set this sheen to a value of one and I'll change this color to kind of a deep orange color. And you can see that that did a lot to catch more yellow orangey colors on the surface of these petals. Then I'll duplicate this unified noise here and just view that again through the surface unlit. This time I'll leave it at three octaves but I'll set the frequency to 28 in the X component and three in the Y component. So we get these streaks running across the petals. I'll just duplicate this unified noise one more time and I'll visualize that again. And this time I'll make one that's a bit more uniform in its frequency. So I'll set the X component to 60 and the Y component to 35. So now these are a bit more small bumps and I'll set that to the Worley noise. So we get this kind of cell-like structure. And now if we add these two together, and we put them into the displacement of the shader. And then we visualize this material like standard surface again. And you see that this went absolutely nuts. So if we just take the displacement and we decrease it to 0.0002, and we can see that the cell-like structure is a little bit too strong. So I'll just add a material x multiply before this add and i'll set that to 0.3 and now the effect is a lot more subtle and that's it for our shader now if we go on our camera we just need to set up depth of field if we click this show handle button we get these camera controls and if we click shift f we get this focus plane up and now if we hold shift and we click on a place on our pedal we can see that this focus plane intersects with the place that we clicked and if we change the f-stop to something like two we now have depth of field and now we're ready to render it out so i'll drop down a karma i'll just plug that into our stage we'll just take the rendering engine and set it to xpu and then I found for a relatively clean result, I need 256 samples. On the USD render up, we'll set our frame range. So set specific frame range, delete the channels, because we don't need to render the beginning of this. We can actually wait until frame 100 to start. And then I generally like to go into monitor and enable this mplay monitor. This means that when I hit render to disk, it'll open up mplay and show me what I'm rendering.